President Trump did to sort of whip up this crowd. He can't suddenly divorce himself from the consequences of really irresponsible untruths that he continued to try to sell. I, I think President Trump's right. I completely agree with him. Uh, this is outrageous. Uh, the timing of it is absurd. And as earlier, I called this absolute bull Former President Donald Trump says he is nearing a third indictment, this time in a case having to do with the January 6th insurrection. Joining us live now to discuss this topic and more is WSFA's Washington correspondent Peter Zampa. And Peter, what can you tell us about this new development today? Yes, Ali and Rosanna, it appears that another shoe is about to drop in the continuing legal saga for former President Donald Trump. He dropped this bombshell on us this morning, saying that he got a letter from special counsel Jack Smith on Sunday. And if that name sounds familiar, that's because it's the same special counsel who's heading up that investigation into his handling of classified documents in Florida. But Trump, you know, as we expected him to do, is saying that this is a, just a continuation of the consistent witch hunt into his into his handling of, of things like January 6th, of things like the 2020 general election at large. And he says that this is just a witch hunt. He says that they're trying to take him out of the 2024 equation, that this is Biden's Justice Department trying to get rid of him because he thinks he can beat former, uh, he thinks he can beat President Biden in his quest to take back the White House. Um, so we're hearing that from Trump, but we're not hearing the DOJ confirm itself that this letter has been sent, but Trump making it clear he's expecting to be arrested and indicted for the third time in four and a half months. Now we heard in those sound bites what U.S. lawmakers think about Trump's legal troubles, but what about GOP candidates running for a president against Trump? Well, just like on Capitol Hill, we've also got different ends of the spectrum when it comes to the 2024 election and the candidates running. And for, on one hand, we've got the more moderate governor from a former governor from Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson, saying that he thinks that regardless of this case, that Donald Trump's actions on January 6th were disqualifying already. So he wants him out of the picture. Uh, meanwhile, you've got Trump's biggest, most formidable opponent, we should say, in, in Governor Ron DeSantis from the state of Florida, who says he doesn't think Trump should be charged. He does think that this is the DOJ weaponized against conservatives and Republicans running for the White House. So he does not think that, that Trump should be charged in this case because he thinks that the Justice Department is running rampant on behalf of Joe Biden, who's trying to go after his political opponents. So we are kind of seeing the different flavors across that uh, political spectrum when it comes to 2024. Peter, this is not the only legal trouble the president's facing. The president's case in Florida having to do with his alleged mishandling of classified documents is also moving ahead. What's the latest there? Well, so they had a conference hearing today. I think a lot of folks were hoping to get a start date in this trial, and unfortunately, we we came up, we came out with nothing uh, from from Judge Eileen Cannon, a Trump appointee. She did indicate that she thinks that the Justice Department's request to start in December is just a little bit too soon for a case like this. There's a lot of details to hash out, but we're not sure if she does think that it should expand beyond 2024 election, like the Trump team is requesting. They want to, of course, delay this in hopes that a Republican gets in the White House, maybe even Donald Trump gets in the White House so he can throw this thing out altogether. So I think folks are expecting a happy medium somewhere in there to probably to take place during this election cycle. We just don't know exactly when it'll start yet. Peter Zampa live in Washington, D.C. for us this afternoon. Peter, thank you so much for your time and insight. We appreciate it. You bet.